In the previous videos, we mentioned about the tender document. It is basically a document that serves as an offer or invitation to the contractor to undertake a construction project. Within the document, all the details related to the project will be clearly specified. This includes the works to be done, the materials to be supplied, the plans and drawings, the specifications of the works, as well as the views of quantities are given. Within the tender document, the conditions of contracts are also clearly outlined. This will become the basis that eventually going to be transformed into the agreement between the contractors and the employers. Now this tender document are normally draft on basis of the standard form of contract, particularly the conditions of the contract part. This brings to the topic that we're going to discuss in this video, which is about the standard form of contract. It is basically a printed form published by an authoritative body in the industry. This standard form of contract is recognized by the government as well as the construction industry parties. It basically set out the terms or conditions that all the parties participating a project to be carried out. And this provide a legal framework identifying the rights, obligations and duties of the parties. At the same time, it also established the scope of the right and duties of the contract administrative procedures necessary for the contract operations. These standard forms of contract is normally made transparent to all the parties and the terms and conditions are deemed to be agreed and are not subjected to further negotiations or amendment. That means the employer cannot simply change any clause within the standard form of contract and put it into the tender document in order to favor its benefit. There are quite a number of standard form of contract in the industry. The conditions of the contract may vary slightly, but most of the major things are similar. The employers are allowed to choose any standard form of contract which is deemed applicable and adopt it in the tender document but amendment onto the clause within the standard form of contract which is being selected is not allowed. The purpose of the standard form of contract is to allocate risk fairly between the parties. The ultimate purpose of this standard form of contract it is for the administrations of the construction contracts. It is to ensure effective, efficient and non-disputable contract administrations and to avoid emergence of the problems that can affect the overall project. Simply said, the standard form of contract establish the conditions which are to be complied by all the parties involved in their construction project. The principle here is to protect the rights of all the parties and to allocate risk fairly between the parties. Should all the parties abide to the obligations and duties as stipulated in the contract, there shouldn't be any dispute and the project can be carried out smoothly until completions so that the contractor is able to deliver the work to the employer. Employer gets what he wants and the contractor got paid for the work he has done. In the case that this standard form of contract is not there, that means there is no tools or guideline in resolving any disputes arise during the construction project. This may significantly affect the progression of the project and in the worst case scenario, the project might not be able to 
be completed. Just now we mentioned there are quite a number of standard form of contract. The most commonly known are the PAM contract and also PWD contract. These two are the most popular standard form of contract being used in Malaysia. Other than that, there are also quite a number of the standard form of contract. Let us look into it one by one. The PAM contract is produced by the Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia, which is also known as Malaysian Institute of Architects. There are quite a number of versions of this PAM contract. The latest one is PAM contract 2018. This PAM contract 2018 is popularly used for the construction project in the private sectors of Malaysia. I would say nearly all the construction projects related to the building woods in the private sector, they will use this PAM contract. The second one is the PWD contract. PWD stands for Public Wood Department, which is also known as Jabatan Kerja Raya JKR. We call it PWD 203A Revisions 2010. This is commonly used for the government project throughout Malaysia. Other than that, we have JKR Sarawak form of contract, which is mainly meant for the state government projects, particularly Sarawak. Other than that, we have this FIDIC contract. It is an international contract. We have also CIDB form of contract, IEM form of contract, and others. The applications of different types of form of contracts are listed here. Except for these two, all the other form of contracts are meant for the traditional type of construction project. For this, it will be meant for the Tengi project. As for this, it will be meant for the design and build projects. In terms of the popularity, these three are the most common one. The PAN contracts are for the private sector and the PWD contracts are for the government project throughout Malaysia and Sarawak JKR form of contracts are meant for the projects called by the JKR Sarawak. As for the CIDB, IEM and AIAC standard form of contract, at the moment it is still not widely used in Malaysia.